Good morning. I'm Gary Ferner, the pastor of Fairmont Community Church, United Church of Christ, and this is... I'm Stephanie Weaver. I'm the pastor of Robinson Elmwood United Church. And I'm Kyle Arnold, student pastor at Fairmont Community Church. Welcome to worship this morning. Uh, we have some announcements, maybe. <laughs> uh, we are offering drive-by poems today. Uh, about 11 o'clock, we should be out there. Um, please don't put yourself at risk. Wear your masks if you are going out and all of that. And stay in your cars and, you know, they're long. We'll hand them to you. And we will be wearing masks and gloves also. So um, join us if you would like and um, to, to get a poem. And at some point in the service when poems are waiting, I invite you to grab whatever is around you, whether it be a scarf or a branch or that artificial flower that, that's sitting on your table, whatever that may be, so that we may all wave together. Announcements on your side of things? This week we received a number of email requests for prayers. Thank you, we've been asking for that. So continue to send us emails of concerns and also of joys. And we hope that we can reflect all of the ones that have come through. They, come, they are coming from different perspectives, from the Robinson side, from the Paramount side, phone calls and emails, so we, we try to do them all. I will remind my session members that there will be a Zoom meeting on Tuesday, and you should be receiving the invitations for that. If not today, you'll receive them tomorrow. Knowing of nothing else, 
Let us prepare our hearts for worship today. Join with me in the call to worship. The words will be up on the screen, or you may have received the bulletin, and you can read it from there. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. joyous hearts because your love knows no bounds. No boundaries, limits that can thwart your loving kindness and following us all the days of our lives. As we usher you into our lives this day with branches or scarves or waving arms, may they be signs of Christ's victory and grant that we who carry them may follow them away of the cross, that dying and rising with him, we may enter into your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Each week during Lent, we've been using symbols of sacrifice that we've been placing on our uh, worship table. And the Lenten season has always been a time of repentance, and a time when we bring before God our brokenness of our lives and our asking of God's healing and forgiveness. So as we remember his body broken, the symbols that we lift up remind us of the forgiveness of the sacrificial death that he made possible. From Matthew 27, verses 27 through 30. The governor's soldiers took Jesus with them into the praetorium and collected the whole cohort around him. Having twisted some thorns into a crown, they put this on his head and placed a reed in his right hand. To make fun of him, they knelt before him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and they spat on him. In our world, we can imagine going through the pain for the sake of good. Modern medicine makes the discomfort of surgery worthwhile for the sake of better health, so perhaps we could endure the pain of a crown of thorns upon our brow. But the mockery, the humiliation, what would make us endure such taunting? The crown of thorns symbolizes the sacrifice of mocking humiliation that Jesus was willing to. Crown of thorns upon the first post here on the table in front of the, the in front of the cross is a symbol that recalls Christ's sacrifice to call us to sacrifice for Christ. Let us pray. God of love and of Jesus, God of sacrifice and of Christ, may in silence these symbols speak to us. Speak and let your servants hear. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Lord Jesus Christ, how well you know our hearts. And still, still you, you love us. us. You have loved us to the end. end. 
we have denied you. And we have denied our calling to serve one another. We have betrayed you. And we, we have betrayed, betrayed your commandment to love one another. Pour out your spirit and grace upon us. Teach us to love and serve you faithfully, and to love and serve one another by the example you have set for us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Now the Lord Jesus Christ has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. Now the promise is fulfilled, and love's redeeming work is done. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. God. With you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. So things are a little different for us worshiping here in Studio 19, and one of the things that I miss the most is gathering with some of our young people. I miss Liam, I miss Lily, I miss Morgan and James, and sometimes Chase. And if by chance any of you happen to be watching today, this message can be for you, but it also is for all of us that we might learn a few new things. In our Hebrew scripture, it starts with a word of thanksgiving. And I have to admit, I think that my particular generation doesn't do a very good job of this. You know what this is, right? This is a thank you note. This is a box of thank you notes. And while I think we are grateful for things that happen, I think we forget sometimes to say thanks. 
So I get thank you notes all the time because our parishioners and the people in our community are exceptionally good about doing those kinds of things. And I will promise to do a better job of trying to send thank you notes myself. If we were going to send a thank you note to God, what might that look like? I'm pretty sure my buddy Liam would have the answer to that. He would say, Pastor Gary, it's a prayer. It's a prayer. We can say thanks to God anytime we want just by saying a prayer. So if you would join me in a short prayer to give thanks, we can do just that. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give thanks for a studio where we can reach all of our members and even beyond membership with the word that you give us. We give thanks that our families are safe and sound, practicing good social distancing skills and keeping safe. And for those that do fall ill, we give thanks for the medical professionals that can help them, especially when they are very, very sick. Dear Lord, we know that we can pray to you anytime we want, any way we want. So hear our prayers of gratitude and thanksgiving. This is our thank you note. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let your word, O oh God, break open our hearts this day through the power of the Holy Spirit, that we may enter into the coming of Holy Week, ready to meet Jesus as he is, not what he, we expect of him. First scripture reading. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is of the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in his eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
thank Darren Paper and his backup crew for sharing the music, special music with us this morning. The second scripture passage this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, the second chapter, beginning with verse 1. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached the Fetch at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with him. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you. Just look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a coat, the plow of a donkey. Disciples went and did as Jesus directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them and sat on them. Very large crowds spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that had followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, 
a whole city was in turmoil asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Now, when I read any story, whether it be from scripture or from a piece of history, I often wonder and sometimes even dream about what would it have been like to have been there? You know, it's easy to wonder and dream about being somewhere when it's a good time, but uh, not so much for the bad times. We right now, we are surely living in a part of history that which generations to come will never fantasize about being part of it. These, my friends, are very hard times. And these are also times when it's good for our mental health to recall the happier times, to go ahead and remember and recall the good times, because they will help us frame what's going on, knowing and trusting that better things are to come. There's so much in life for which we can be grateful. Now, today's passage, the beginning in particular, definitely reads like it's one of those good times, right? Because we love the imagery of Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a borrowed donkey, and people are waving their branches, they're throwing their garments on the ground. And most who were there that day, they were filled with such joy, joy in the fact that they knew that they were going to get a glimpse of their king. Hosanna was the cheer that they raised. And that's a word that has a number of meanings. It means can mean help. It can mean save, I pray. It can mean save now. And it can mean praise. And one author writes this. What was the intention of the people in Jerusalem when they shouted, Hosanna? Well, he says, when the Jewish people shouted Hosanna, regardless of which specific meaning the word has, the intent for the people was clear. They wanted a political and military messiah. They did not want a religious one. They wanted an earthly king. And at the triumphal entry, the people of Jerusalem, they rejoiced. But then, later on, Jesus fails their expectations. And so they will begin to reject Jesus. And finally, by the time that Jesus stands before Pilate, they all shout, crucify him. Many of the same people who waved their branches in welcome. And as I think about that, I have to ask the question of, well, what about us? Jesus didn't meet up to their expectations. Well, what about for us? And what kind of expectations are we placing on our Savior? And in particular, what are those expectations that we might be placing upon Jesus in this point in time of history where we find ourselves? There's a conservative evangelical pastor who suggested to his followers that God will help multiply their toilet paper amid the coronavirus pandemic. Was Pastor Rodney? Howard Brown, who was a leader of the Florida-based Revival Ministries International, that told his congregation that this should be a time of supernatural sustenance where you will have in your hand the toilet paper and it will multiply. You just can't make this stuff up, my friends. And then he went on to say, and every day there will be multiplications of toilet paper. You look at that one roll of toilet paper in your hand and you think, I'm going to run out of toilet paper. But then another roll of toilet paper will appear and you won't even be able to explain how it took place. And then he went on to tell his followers, the River Tampa Bay Church, that he was not going to be closing down the church because they were not a bunch of pansies. He says, we're not going to stop anything. I've got news for you all. He said, the church will not close. 
The only time this church will close is when the rapture is taking place. The Bible school, our Bible school is open because we're raising up revivalists and not pansies. True story. I think their church has closed at this point, but I kind of have to wonder how that toilet paper situation is working out for all of them. How many of us look to our Savior to make our dreams come true? You know, not thy will done, thy will be done, but my will be done. How often do we have those kinds of attitudes? And it's even more of a temptation to feel that that way when we want to feel some kind of release from going through a particular bad time. Now the Jews, they understood that, because the Jews were at best second-rate citizens in the Roman Empire. The pride, their pride and their power, their prestige of the nation of Israel had long ago faded. They had no king, they had no world power, they had no influence, they really didn't even have a place to be able to call a Roman. They got along okay with the Romans because they knew that was the only way that they could survive. But it had been a long, bloody history where Israel always seemed to come out on the losing end. And the Jews were so, so much looking forward to the day when things were going to be reversed. That Israel would once again be the powerhouse. That they would have their rightful position of power prestige, and that life would again be good. Finally, they thought, finally, here he comes, and all those things that we've been dreaming about, they're going to finally, finally come true. And so they looked out to Jesus, and they shouted, Hosanna, Jesus, save us now. And they believed that Jesus could give them exactly what they we're looking for someone who was going to make their lives comfortable, someone who was going to make things a little easier. Hosanna, Hosanna, save us, save us from our problems, rescue us from those ruthless Romans, restore our nation. Hosanna, make our lives better. Hosanna. Jesus, save us now. Jesus, Hosanna, send us toilet paper. <clears throat> Desires, obviously, in our time and in theirs, they certainly go much deeper than that. And if anything, we are probably shouting, Hosanna, Lord, keep us healthy. Hosanna, make our nation wealthy again. Hosanna, let's bring those unemployment numbers down again. Hosanna, Lord, let us wake up tomorrow and all of this be over. Hosanna, spare my family from this disease. We indeed all look to God to get us through difficult times. But it's often on our terms that we want that. And we diminish the role then of who God really is in our lives. And in those moments, we risk slipping into the same mindset about Jesus as those citizens had. Mistaking Jesus to be someone whose primary purpose is to save us from our problems problems that we might be currently experiencing in life. Our Lord most certainly, without any doubt, can get us through the storms and trials of life. It is the work he did that brings us to the next life that matters. Yes, he's walking with us. Now we are not alone. But all of this that we experience, God didn't put it upon us. God didn't 
say because you're X, Y, Z, I'm going to do this to you. That's not what God does. What God does is when X, Y, Z happens, God says to us, walk with me, and I will get you through the storm. I trust in my Lord, and I know that while he walks through the storm with me, I'm also able to look forward to eternity, the true hope, the true salvation that will get me through anything that happened here, because you know what? None of this bad stuff we experience here will follow us into eternity. And so this morning, <laughs> grab your branches, or grab your hats, or grab your scarves, or whatever you have, and let's wave them this morning as a reminder of the victory we have through Jesus, victory of over sin and over death, to acknowledge him as the king of our hearts. Hosanna. 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 This is the time that we would share our joys and concerns. You all have sent some of them in by email or by text or by message. So let's take just a moment in silence to collect our thoughts as we prepare for prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we do give you thanks for all the blessings that you bestow upon us, even as we are in the midst of crisis. We lift up our thanks for healthcare professionals like Heather and Karen and Vin, along with all the first responders who do their jobs with a grave amount of danger surrounding them. We give thanks for homes and for groceries and for medications, and we pray for those who do not have these things. We are grateful for the natural reminders of the coming resurrection, like daffodils and the crocus and the nesting birds and the groundhogs who show themselves after the winter season. We give thanks for the technology and the know-how to stay in touch, even as we are distant from one another. And along with our thanks, we give thanks that Joan Cole is now back at Elderwood, recovering from surgery and a broken hip. We give thanks for birthdays that are coming up, particularly Jim's birthday, along with countless others who celebrate this week. We give you thanks for ministries like the Plymouth Crossroads in Buffalo, New York, who provide transitional housing for young men who have nowhere to live. Along with our gratitude and with our prayers of thanksgiving, we have concerns. We lift up Kim in ICU, suspected of having the coronavirus and awaiting tests and battling multiple sclerosis at the same time. Be with her in her battle and with her family as they support her through these difficult days. We ask that you be with all those who have been affected by the coronavirus all around the world for families and individuals who li whose lives have been changed. We lift up our prayers of concern for Don, who tested positive for the virus. May he recover quickly. We think of Mark's mom, who also tested positive. Sue Britt's sister-in-law, as she awaits her own test results. We also lift up Joanne, who battles cancer, and who underwent additional tests this week 
be with her and her husband, John, during this difficult time. Dear Lord, we pray for our sisters and brothers who struggle with chemical dependency or addiction, that they find the resources to make good decisions in the face of our distancing requirements. We continue to keep in our prayers all those who experience violence in their lives, in relationships, in their neighborhoods, in their homes, in their countries. We ask that you bestow your peace upon those who would use violence to get their way. We continue to keep in our prayers our elected leaders, our local, our state, and our federal elected leaders, that they use sound judgment to make decisions in our best interests. And we lift up in our prayers for religious leaders all over the world as they try to minister with new tools and new ways. May they always remember to keep healthy boundaries. We continue to pray for organizations that are applying for relief through the government stimulus plan that they have the resources that they need to continue their good work. All of these things, dear Lord, we lift up to you. In the name of Jesus, our risen Savior. Amen. And now if you would join me in saying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying it the way you know it best. Our the Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be, be thy, thy name. name. Thy kingdom come. Thy, thy will be done. On Amen. earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day Today our daily, daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. During the month of April, in addition to regular giving, you will be receiving the One Great Hour of Sharing, the Easter Offering, as well as the Beacon's offering for Robinson Elmwood in support of Pepper International. Checks may be mailed directly to the churches at 126 Val Terry Road, Syracuse, New York, 13219. Robinson Elmwood also has two online giving options, PayPal or Bango. You can find both of these on our website at www.robinsonelmwood.com. What shall we offer for all of God's goodness to us? Let our hosannas to the one who brings liberation take form in our tithes and offerings. Let us pray together. God, God of all good gifts, yes, we, we thank you for showing us how to care for each other. other. May, May the gifts we have shared and will share in the days ahead be used to bring hope, courage, strength, and peace to your children. Amen. I invite you from wherever, wherever you may be to join us in singing Ride On, Ride On in Majesty.
I invite you to join together by bowing your heads as I offer our closing prayer this morning. Lord, and so it begins. We will walk through this week from palms now to passion, as it is Jesus we seek. Each moment we will walk through these days now with Jesus and time to see people the way Jesus sees us. Do watch for the ones who need hope, who need kindness. Seeking the light, not the darkness that blinds us. And as we go walking through these days, may the love we know be spread to each person we meet on the go. May God bless and keep us in love, and may God's face shine upon us with grace from above. And may we walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 